Choosing the right software tool is always a challenge, but in no area is it a bigger challenge than finding the right webinar tool. So many good choices out there. What's the best webinar package for you? We'll explore that today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dottotech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Now, I am looking forward to this video today because webinars are a passion of mine. We do a weekly webinar series here at Dottotech and I love the access that webinars give us to our community and to our audiences. And that's no surprise because I come from a traditional broadcast background. Uh, for 20 years, I hosted a nationally syndicated TV and radio program here in Canada. So I have a real appreciation for the broadcast aspect of webinars. Now, when people ask me, and I do get asked this a lot, what is the best webinar tool? I always, I, I take a step back and I say, you, I can't tell you because the best webinar package for you might not be the best webinar package for somebody else. We need to set the capabilities of these webinar tools against your needs and expectations. So I'm going to try and illustrate to you in this video today, uh, kind of the four main archetype webinar packages that I use very frequently and set that against the type of webinars that you might like to deliver. And I think this will put you well on the path to making a good decision for a webinar package. So the four packages that we're going to take a look at today are in no particular order, Zoom webinars, uh, GoToWebinar, Webinar Jam, and Crowdcast because I think each of these showcases a different style of webinar. Now, when you look at these packages, what you have to recognize is if you realize where the software came from, what their genesis is and what their roots are, I think you'll understand the community that they serve best. And I'll illustrate this as we go along. Now, before I get into talking about specific webinar packages, I have a few things that I have to bring us all up to speed on as far as webinar technologies and things for you to think about. So if you're here just to see what I have to say about Zoom or GoToWebinar or Webinar Jam or Crowdcast, I'm going to put a time code in down here uh, so that you can jump ahead in the video to the to when I talk about those packages. And we'll also put these time codes in the description so you can jump ahead if you don't want to hear this kind of base level stuff that I'm going to be talking about. But the first thing I want to talk about is the types of webinars people deliver. Now, in choosing your webinar package, you have to understand what the end goal is of your webinar. And I've got kind of six basic webinar types that I think most of us end up using. They are presentation webinars where our goal is basically delivering information, you know, like a slideshow type webinar. We have marketing webinars where we're promoting a specific product. There are sales webinars where we're looking for a call to action. We're looking to create a, 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 an outcome from the webinar, which is people signing up for a program or purchasing a product. Uh, there are meetings where we want two-way flow of information going back and forth between our participants and ourselves. And we also have trainings where you're just basically trying to train and bring people up to speed on uh, some topic or aspect. And then there's shows. There's ones that really don't have a, a firm outcome, but they're far more entertainment and focused. Uh, those are the kind of the six basic formats of webinars that I think that most of us will be interested in. So as I talk about all of the other aspects of choosing a webinar package, think long and hard about what type of webinar you want to create. What is the outcome that you're looking for from your webinars? Then uh, that will help you set the context of which package is going to work best for you. Um, so let's talk now about basic webinar technologies, because we'll be talking about two different types of webinar packages as well. There's a lot, there's a lot of preamble here. Uh, the two different types are, we have webinar software that will allow us to run in a browser. It's very flexible, very easy to use, very accessible webinar packages. So in the four that we're talking about today, Crowdcast and Webinar Jam are the two that work basically in the browser. They don't require an executable. They don't require us to download and run an application. Now, the strength of browser-based webinars is the ubiquitous nature, is the fact that you can run them on any platform, on any device, on any smartphone. Uh, all you have to do is launch a browser, and theoretically, you can run a webinar. The downside is that technology tends to be a little bit less reliable 
than the executable style because the developers have less control over the actual environment that the webinar is broadcast into. And it comes down to the fact that webinar, uh, that browsers are constantly being updated by the manufacturers, things are being changed in the browser as well. Everybody with their own plugins and their own setup has a slightly different configuration of their webinar and you're never too sure where a conflict might arise. So reliability on those applications is somewhat less. The upside is, is the ubiquitous nature, the fact that it's really easy and accessible and you don't have to make people who are attending your webinar jump through hoops to attend. The benefit of executables, in this case we're talking about Zoom and GoToWebinar, is the manufacturer has tremendous control over the webinar environment. It's an executable that you actually have to launch on your computer. So the reliability of those platforms tends to be much higher. Uh, they're also quite rigid, typically speaking, as far as what benefits and what features are built into it, a little bit less flexible as far as, as what's in it. Uh, and then one of the negatives is that in some environments, you are being blocked from downloading an executable. So you might not even be able to attend the webinar if it requires an executable, uh, depending on your environment. Now, in fairness, both Zoom and uh, GoToWebinar uh, are coming up with browser-based alternatives, uh, but they aren't as robust. They, they have the same issues as the browser-based ones as far as reliability, et cetera. So you lose some of the benefit of the, uh, of the software by choosing to use the browser-based uh, options for those tools. So that kind of gives us a baseline understanding of the technologies that we're going to be talking about today. So let's dive in now and start talking about the specifics uh, and strengths of these four packages that I'm going to be talking about. And we'll begin with Zoom. Now, Zoom is a wonderful webinar package. It's one of the ones that I do recommend the most because it is so darn reliable. But in order to understand Zoom and to understand what Zoom really brings to the table, you have to recognize the fact that Zoom has grown out of a meeting tool. So Zoom's strengths are in the presentation slideshow area, but they're also very strong in the meeting area. They really do a good job of facilitating online meetings. So in a corporate environment, for example, Zoom is a terrific option. Now, where Zoom kind of falls a little bit short is in the flexibility and in the entertainment side and in the integration side with online marketing tools. So Zoom's strengths are the fact that we can incorporate and bring other people in on a call very easily for meetings, that we have tremendous reliability as far as delivering the webinar content. Uh, it's an easy tool to use. It's an easy tool to navigate. On the flip side of that is the fact that Zoom doesn't allow us to stream third-party video into the webinar. So any video, any inclusions that we have to have have to be streamed from the desktop, which really limits its, uh, that, the flexibility. Zoom also doesn't have really good online marketing tools built in. It's got reasonable integration with CRMs, but it's not super strong as far as creating nice landing pages and nice opt-in pages and tracking all, of the, uh, tracking all of the metrics of people engaged in the webinars. It's really, I think, in its sweet spot is as a corporate tool or as a tool within your business where you're working with a community that you're not necessarily selling to, but you're teaching, training, and meeting with. It's not really designed as an online marketing tool. It's nowhere near as strong as some of its competitors in that space. Having said that, as far as reliability and as far as flexibility for delivering meeting type content and presentation content, I think it is without peer. It's a wonderful package. Now, the closest to Zoom is GoToWebinar. And GoToWebinar, again, probably grew more out of a meeting tool than as a webinar tool. And GoToWebinar, again, a very reliable tool that's got a great track record, which really excels in the corporate space. Now, GoToWebinar is increasing the capabilities of creating more appealing landing pages and opt-in pages than they have in the past because they were quite limited in that space as well. But in my mind, the biggest limitation of a tool like GoToWebinar is the fact that they really suppress chat. They really suppress interaction with their audience. So it excels as a training tool and as a presentation tool, again, in the corporate environment. It's not so great in the marketing side of the business. Now, the reason that I think chat is so important is when you deliver a webinar, 
you really want to make sure that you create as much energy and as much excitement in your community as possible. And doing a webinar means that, you, I mean, the fact that you're online, you don't have the benefit of being in a room where people get the social interaction and the energy from the other people in the room. A lot of that energy gets replaced by chat, by people commenting in chat. And if your chat is very public and very accessible, I think that that adds a lot of value to a webinar. Everybody doesn't agree with me. A lot of people like to deliver their webinar without being, without their, their audience being distracted by the chat. They want full attention on the content that they're delivering. And in that case, they like to suppress how much the chat is happening. And that's where GoToWebinar becomes a wonderful tool because the chat is really limited as far as its public access goes. It's there, but it's really gated for the, uh, for the webinar administrators to look after. So if you are looking to do presentations and you don't want a lot of audience interaction, then a tool like GoToWebinar becomes a nice viable option. Again, a very reliable tool. They were recently acquired by the LogMeIn people who seem to be doing wonders as far as breathing fresh air and energy into the product. Now let's move on and let's talk about the two browser-based tools, which are Webinar Jam and Crowdcast. Now, Webinar Jam is the tool that I use the most. And the reason I use it the most is not because I think it's the best and most reliable webinar package, because it does have some issues as far as reliability goes, but it is the tool that's best designed to service an online marketing community. It has brilliant integration with CRMs. Uh, in my case, I, I integrate it with Infusionsoft effortlessly. And so it has tremendous communication going back and forth with my CRM. It's also got great landing pages that you can create. So it's a much more marketing friendly and internet marketing focused product than are the other tools. It also, as do the others, has a ability to create evergreen webinars out of the back end, so you can uh, continue to have a webinar work for you even after it's been delivered live. But within the webinar itself, it's got very open chat that's very exposed as far as adding energy and adding uh, value to the webinar itself and then very strong calls to action within it where you can actually make offers. You can track sales right within the webinar package and right in the sidebar as you deliver a webinar, you can ask people to sign up for a course or purchase a product. And as, so as a online marketing and online sales tool, I think Webinar Jam is, is, is pretty much sets itself apart from the others. As an online training tool, as a meeting tool, it's pedestrian. It's not as good as say Zoom is in that particular case. And then the fourth package we're going to talk about today is Crowdcast. And Crowdcast is one of a new breed of webinar tools that are growing out. And they are far more freeform and far more based on social networking than traditional webinars, if that makes sense. And allow me to explain. So Crowdcast, rather than having a traditional registration page that you would find in a registration module and having it closed down the way it is in all of the other packages, has a web page that you create uh, that, has, that allows people to log in and return to the same uh, place that they opt in for the webinar to actually view the webinar. So it's much more like landing on a social networking page. So not, not exactly like Facebook, but it's got a lot more in common with a tool like Facebook, where the chat can start happening before the webinar happens and anticipation can build. And rather than just having people subscribe to the, or, or sorry, sign up for the webinar with an email that goes back and forth with a login link, as works with all of the other webinar packages, Crowdcast allows you to have your community subscribe to your webinar, much as they would a Facebook or a YouTube page. And in that case there, they're informed when the next webinar comes and they can join it as a community member rather than as a attendee of the webinar. That social networking aspect of Crowdcast is I think a bit of a game changer. It allows us to take a look at webinars in a far different light than the more traditional structure that we see from our other webinar packages. It's really solid as far as providing content from, from an entertainment or an ongoing serial show perspective. But again, it's not as strong in training, it's not as strong in sales, and it's certainly not as strong in online marketing. But it's got a new community focus as well as a real value as far as delivering an ongoing show. 
So I hope I've given you an idea. We don't have time to dive into each one of these webinar packages right now, but I have a couple of options for you that will allow you to look at these packages in greater detail. The first is I'm going to include a link to a description and a breakdown of all of the webinar packages that I look at as far as their strengths and weaknesses goes. It's just a spreadsheet, but it'll help you, it'll help you define and figure out exactly which webinar package you might want to look at based on the criteria that I've put forward here. But even more valuable, I created a, an online product, I do it once a year, I'm hoping to do it again next year, called Webinar Palooza, where we test out several webinar packages. In this case, we tested out six webinar packages, including all four that I just talked about. And I take you in this little mini course through each of the enrollments and what it looks like actually delivering a webinar and receiving a webinar in each of these packages. I can't think of a better way to explore the world of webinars than to sign up for Webinar Palooza. I will put the links in above and I will put the links in below. Uh, and the good news about Webinar Palooza is it is completely free. You can take this training, go through all of the content that we covered in Webinar Palooza at no charge. I think that if you're serious about looking into the world of webinars, as soon as this video is over, you should sign up for Webinar Palooza, go through that content, and that will illustrate to you and give you a much better idea of what direction you should go as far as signing up for a webinar tool. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to say in chat in this particular video. There are so many options and so many ideas uh, that people have as far as webinar tools goes. And I know there are a ton of tools that I didn't have time to look at. I didn't have time to share with you today. Uh, I'll comment when you, when you ask questions about them, what I know about them. I've tested some out. I haven't tested others. Uh, there are a lot of options out there for you, uh, but this should give you a good baseline to compare all of the different tools and hopefully a far better understanding of what you are going to be looking for in a webinar package so you can make the best decision possible. If you have found this video today to be useful, I have two favors to ask. The first being, please share this video, let others know about it, as well subscribe to our channel. And when you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so you hear when we upload new videos here at Dotto Tech. Looking forward to your comments. I promise I'll read each and every one of them. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.